Are you all right, Mr. Frank? Yes, Meek, yes. Everyone in the office has gone home. Please, don't stay up too late. What's the use of torturing yourself? I've come to say goodbye. I'm leaving you here, Meek. What do you mean? Where are you going? I don't know yet. I can't stay in Amsterdam. It has too many memories for me. You've done so much for us. The suffering. No, no, it wasn't suffering. You can't say we suffered. Oh, these are some of your old papers. We found them in the heap of rubbish on the floor after you left. Burn them. Burn this? Anne's diary. Monday, the 6th of July, 1942. Is it possible that it was me three years ago? Dear Diary, since you and I are going to be great friends, I will start by telling you about myself. My, My name, name is Anne Frank. Frank. I am 13 years old. I was born on the 12th of June, 1929. As my family is Jewish, we emigrated to Holland when Hitler came to power. Something's happened to them. I know it. Mr. Frank friends have been here at 7 o'clock. He said... We have two miles to walk. You can't expect. Sorry we're late. There were so many green police in the streets. We had to take the wrong way. I'm Edith. These are my daughters, Margo and Anne. You must be the band dance. Hello. It's nice to meet you all. It's such a pleasure. Hello, girls. That is my son, Peter. We put the storage of food you sent with you. Your drugs are here. Soap, linen here. Thank you, Meek. Goodbye, then, for the moment. I have to get down to the office before the workmen get here. Meep and I will bring food and the news. Every day. Let's take off these clothes. I can't believe we didn't get arrested with a fur coat in July and that shadow of Peter crying the whole way. A cat? And please, everyone must know we need to be completely silent. After six we can move freely, I promise. This is also our bedroom. Mr. and Mrs. Van Den will take you upstairs. But are you sure? Thank you, thank you. You'll be right, Peter. You're not scared. Mm, mother. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Frank. What's your cat's name? Mushi. Mushi, Mushi, Mushi. I love cats. I had one, but they made me leave it at home. He doesn't like strangers. Then I'll have to stop being a stranger. Have you had him fixed? No. Well, you ought to have him fixed, you know, stop him from fighting. Where did you go to school? To a secondary. But that's where Margo and I go. I never saw you around. I used to see you. Sometimes. Really? Why didn't you ever come over? I'm sort of a lone wolf. I didn't have any dates with anyone. What are you doing? Burning it. No one will have to see us. We won't be going out. It's funny. I can't burn mine. After all, it is the Star of David. Why not? Something they branded you with? Something they made you wear so they could spit on you? Maybe it's different for a girl. Forgive me, Peter. Now let me see. You must have to your cat. This is also your bedroom. But I warn you, Peter, you can't grow anymore. Not an inch. You'll have to sleep with your feet at the skylight. Are you hungry? We have some bread and butter. No, thank you. You're a nice boy, Peter. Emily, please, there's a box. Will you open it? I'll unwrap it with pleasure. Oh, look, how wonderful. A diary. I've never had a diary, and I've always wanted one. I must go fetch a pencil. And no, even though there's no one in the building. But, Father. It doesn't matter. I don't want you to ever go beyond that door. Never? Not even at nighttime? When everyone's asleep? Can't I go down to listen to the radio? Never. I'm sorry, Emily. It's not safe. No, you must never go beyond that door. I see. It'll be hard, I know. But remember, we have each other, and try to think of the positive things that are new home. I expect I should be describing what it feels like to go into hiding. I only know it's never funny to be able to go outdoors. It's the silence of the nights that frightens me most. Every time I hear a creak in the house or a step on the street outside, I'm sure they're coming for us. At least Smeep and Mr. Crawler are down there in the office. Our protectors, we call them. I asked Father what would happen to them if the Nazis found out they were hiding us. Pim said. It's safe now. The last workman has left. Whee! And settle down, darling. I'm first for the washroom! The end of a lovely school day. I'm gonna go give Mushi his dinner. Can I watch? No. He doesn't like people around while he eats. Ouch! Peter! And no. Peter! Where are you going? Come dance with me. I tell you, I don't know how. And dear, I think you shouldn't play like that with Peter. It's not dignified. I don't care if it's dignified. I don't want it to be dignified. You complain that I don't treat you like a grown-up, but when I do, you resent it. I'm only trying to have some fun, Mother. Dinner's ready, everyone. 
Can you pass come yet? The workman just left a little while ago. What's for dinner tonight? Beans. Not again. We are now in what is known as the bean cycle. Bean boiled, beans and casseroles, beans with strings, beans without strings. Beans, oh beans, I love beans. Miss Van Dan, may I try on your coat? Oh, Anne. It's fine. I don't mind. Let me try with it. My father gave me that to give before he died. He always bought the best that money to buy. Miss Van Dan, did you have any boyfriends before you were married? Anne, that's a personal question. It's not courteous to ask people personal questions. It's fine. Boys were always around around the house. When I was a girl, we had... Oh, God, not again. Shut up! Once then we had a big house in the house, and boys came buzzing around like bees around a jam pot. Mother, for heaven's sake. Please, I see the way you look at Anne. Mother, please, stop. Can't see the sign of your shame, It's nothing to be ashamed of having a little girlfriend. You're crazy. She's only 13. So what? And you're 16. Just perfect. Your father's 10 years older than I am. I warn you, Mr. Frank, if this war lasts any longer, we're going to be related. And then, tomorrow's the tomorrow. Mr. Frank, have I ever told you how intelligent you are? Shh! I can hear a man's voice. Do you think? I think you should just stop talking, just for five minutes. All you do is chatter. If you didn't smoke so much, it would be so bad tempered. Am I smoking? Do you see me smoking? Don't tell me you used to blow cigarettes. One package. Meep only brought me one package. You're smoking all our money. You know that, don't you? Will you shut up? I've never heard grown-ups quarrel before. This isn't a quarrel, it's a discussion, and I've never heard a child so rude before. I? Rude? Yes, your, your back talk is nonsense. Maybe your sister can talk some sense into you. This is all I hear from everyone. How wonderful Margo is. Why don't you be more like Margo? Come on, Anne. Mr. Paylor, what a surprise. Is Meep coming? I have a list for her. Usually when I come up here, I try to bring some bit of good news. But today, something has happened. Meep tells me that she knows a Jewish man. He says he's in trouble. He begged me. Can I do anything for this man? I'm gonna find him a hiding place. So I've come to you. I know it's a terrible thing to ask of you. But would you take him in? It'll be just for a night or two. Of course, of course. He's downstairs in the office. Don Dussel is his name. Dussel, I think I know him. I'll go get it. I think it's fine to have him, but Otto, where are you going to put him? I'm sure Mrs. Dussel can sleep with Anne. I don't mind sleeping with Mother and Anne. You don't mind sharing your room with Mr. Dussel, do you, Anne? No, no, of course not. Hey, is it possible to talk to you after everyone's asleep? Of course, Anne. Has something happened? No, no. I just wanted to talk to you about my writing. So how's your writing going? It's going great. Can I ask for a favor? Depends what it is. Then I'll decide. Can you take this list of gifts I want to get everyone? Some I can make myself, but others, can you get them off the list? I'll see what I can do. Thank you, thank you. Quiet now, Anne. Have you written any more stories? Yes, I wrote this one about a beautiful land where everyone can run free. That's lovely, Anne. I think you should head back to bed now, dear. Please look at the list and let me know what you can do. Who am I? What could it be? 
Sweet shampoo. I made it myself. Thank you, Anne. Mr. Van Dan next. Cigarettes! Some old tobacco, really. We've also found a pipe. Now for Mother. Ten hours of doing whatever I say. Oh, Anne. You wouldn't want to spell that, would you? Nope. It's the most precious gift I've ever had. Father next. I wasn't supposed to get a gift. It's a scarf. Sorry it's not the best. It's fine. It looks great, Anne. This is for Mushi. On behalf of Mushi, I thank you. Aren't you going to open it? He doesn't really get a pop out of the It's a safety razor. He got it for me. What for? Mustache. Can you see Sturdy Merlin? Think it's funny, don't you? Look, you go try it. I'm giving Mushi his gift. It's Miep! Come in, come in! Wake up, everyone! It's Miep! Miep and Mr. Trolley, what a delightful surprise! We came to bring you a New Year's greeting! You shouldn't have. You should have at least one day to yourself. There you are. How are you, Margo? Feeling any better? I'm alright. We filled her full of every kind of pills so she won't cough and make a noise. Well, hello, Miep, Mr. Crawler. With my hope for peace in the New Year. Miep. Have you seen Mushi? Have you seen him anywhere around? I'm sorry, Peter. I asked everyone in the neighborhood if they'd seen a great crowd, but they said no. I have to run. Dirk's taking me to a party tonight. Goodbye, everyone. Uh, just a minute. There's something I'd like you to do for me. Pussy, where are you going? What are you going to do, Pussy? What's wrong? My father says he's going to sell her for a coat. He's crazy about that. Is it possible? Is it possible that anyone is so silly as to worry about a fur coat in times like this? Peter, it's none of your darn business. You say one more thing, I'll take you. I mean it all. Ah! No, 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 you're taking away from me. You hear it's mine. My father gave me that. You have no right. You hear? Just a little discussion of the invisibility of selling this here coat. So I told Mrs. Van Dan it's very selfish of her to keep it while people outside are in desperate need of clothing. By the way, can we get me some cigarettes? I don't care what kind. You ought to be it's terribly difficult to get them, Mr. Van Dyne, but I'll try. Goodbye. It's just the beginning. You know what I think? I think he was the thief that was down there that night. That's how he knows we're here. How was it left? What did you tell him? I said I had to think about it. What shall I do? Pay him the money? Take a chance on firing him, or what? I don't know! For God's sake, don't fire him! Pay him what he asked. Keep him here where you can have your eye on him. Offer him half, and then we'll soon find out if it's blackmail or not. And if it is, we've got to pay, haven't we? Anything he asks, we've got to pay. We'll decide that when the time comes. This may be all my imagination. I get to a point these days where I suspect everyone and everything. Not some simple look or word. On myself. Just hold on. What does that mean? The telephone ringing on a, on a holiday? That's my wife. I told her I had to bring in some invoices. Goodbye. We'll hope for the best. You can take your son for this. Smashing the light? I tell you, it's just a question of time now. Sometimes I wish the end would come. Whatever it is. Margo! At least we'd know where we are! You should be ashamed of yourself talking that way! Think of how lucky we are! Think of the people in the concentration camps! What's the good of that? What's the good of thinking of misery when you're already miserable? That's stupid! Anne! We're young, Margo and Peter and I. You grown us have had your chance, but look at us! If we begin to think of all the horror in the world, we're lost. We're trying to hold on to some kind of ideals, when everything, ideals, hopes, Everything are being destroyed. It isn't our fault that the world is in such a mess. We weren't around all the started, so don't try to take it out on us. She talks as if we started the war. <laughs> Did 
we start the war. I thought you were fine just now. You know just how to talk to them. You know just how to say it. I, I'm no good. I, I can never think, especially when I'm mad. You're making a big mistake about me. I do it all wrong. I say too much. I go too far. I hear people's feelings. I, I thought you were fine. What I mean, if, if it wasn't for you around here, I, I don't know. What I mean... Do you mean it, Peter? Do you really mean it? I said it, didn't I? Thank you, Peter. You've got quite a collection. But wouldn't you like some in your room? I could give you some. Heaven knows you spent enough time in there. Doing heaven knows what. It's easier. A fight starts, or an argument. I don't know. You're lucky, having a room to go to. I hardly ever get admitted alone. When they start in on me, I can't duck away. I have to stand there and take it. You gave some back just now. I get so mad. They form their opinions about everything. But we're still trying to find out. We have problems here that no other people our age have ever had. And just as you think you've solved them, something comes along. And bang, you just start all over again. At least you have someone you can talk to. Not really. Mother... I never discuss anything serious with her. She doesn't understand. But I guess my father's alright. I suppose you're your friends and all. Isn't it funny? You and I, here we've been seeing each other for every minute for almost a year and a half. And this is the first time we've ever really talked. It helps a lot to have someone to talk to, don't you think? It helps you to let off some steam. Well, any time you want to let off some steam, you can come to my room. It's alright with me. Do you mean it? I said it, didn't I? May I come in? Come in, Mother. Mr. Dussel's impatient to get in here. Heavens, he takes the room for himself the entire day. And dear, you're not going in to see Peter again, are you? Mother, I have some intuition. Then may I ask you this much? Please don't shut the door when you go into Peter's room. You sound like Mrs. Van Don. I, I don't mean to say anything wrong. I just wish you would expose yourself to criticism. I don't want you to give Mrs. Van Dan an opportunity to be unpleasant. Mrs. Van Don doesn't need an opportunity to be unpleasant. Everyone's on edge. This is just one more thing. I'm sorry, Mother. I'm going to Peter's room. I'm not going to let Petra Nella Van Don spoil our friendship. Will you please let me in my room? Thank you so much. Aren't they awful? Aren't they impossible treating us as if we were still in the nursery? Just don't let it bother you. It doesn't bother me. I suppose you can't really blame them. They think back to what they were like at our age. They don't realize how much more advanced we are. When you think of the wonderful discussions we've had, Oh, uh, I forgot. I was going to bring you some pictures. Well, I, I'm all right. Thanks. Are you sure? Mia have just brought me some new ones. Maybe later. I think more seriously about life now. I want to be a journalist or something. I love to write. What do you want to do? Oh, I thought I might go off someplace, work on a farm, some job that doesn't take much brains. You shouldn't talk that way. You've got the most awful inferiority complex. I know I'm not smart. That's not true. You're much better than I am in dozens of things, like arithmetic, and algebra, and, well, you're a million times better than I am in algebra. You like Margot, don't you? Like you're much better than me. Oh, uh, er, I, I don't know. No, it's okay. Margot's so sweet. She's bright, she's beautiful, and I'm not... I wouldn't say that. Oh, no, I'm not. I know that. I know quite well that I'm not a beauty. I never have been and never shall be. Uh, I, I don't agree at all. I, I think you're pretty. That's not true. And another thing. From, uh, you've changed from at first, I mean. I have? Well, er, I used to think you were awful noisy. And what do you think now, Peter? Am I still noisy? Well, er, you're qu quieter. I'm glad you don't just hate me. I, I never said that. I bet when you get out of here, you'll never think of me again. That's crazy. Peter, did you ever kiss a girl? Yeah, once. Was she pretty? Huh? The girl that you kissed. Oh, I don't know. I was at a party. I was blindfolded. One of those kissing games. Oh, I don't suppose that really counts then, does it? No, I, I don't think. Nine o'clock. I have to go. No, that's right. Good night. Did, did you change your mind the way I changed mine about you? Well, 
You'll see. Sunday. Maybe we lost track of time. You, it's a dark. I don't lose track of days. I know exactly what day it is. It's Friday, the 4th of August. Friday. And not a man at work. I tell you, Mr. Kohler is dead. And Meep is trying to tell us. No, Meep would never call us. Just pick it up. And listen. For God's sake, you don't I don't have to speak. speak. Just listen and see. If you no, I've told you no. I'll do nothing that might let anyone know we're here. Mr. Frank's right. No! Tell us what side you're on! If we wait patiently, I believe that help will come. I'm going down! Too late. So we just wait here until we die? I can't stand it! I'll kill myself! I'll kill myself! For God's sake, shut up! Go. I wish you had a religion, Peter. No thanks. Not me. Oh, I don't mean you have to be orthodox just to believe in something. That's fine, but when I think I begin to get mad. Look at us, hiding out here for two years, not able to move. Caught up here, waiting for them to come and get us. And all for what? There's always been people I've had to suffer. Sometimes one race, sometimes another, and yet... It doesn't make me feel any better. Look at us, going at each, going at each other like a couple of stupid grown-ups. Look at the sky. Isn't it beautiful? You know, someday, when we're outside again... Afdelitia! 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 No more. I had gone to the country to find some food. When I returned, the place was surrounded by police. We made it our business to know. It was the thief. The thief who told them. 
Sounds weird to say this, but anyone could be happy in a concentration camp. But I think Anne was truly happy there after all those years of being stuck in this place, in these small rooms. I think she was truly happy to be there. A little more. The news of the war was good. The British and Americans were sweeping through France. In January, we were free. Well, the few of us that were left. I found out about my wife's death, of Margot, the Von Dons, Dussel, but Anne, I still hoped. Yesterday I went to Rotterdam. I had heard of a woman there. She had been in Belsen with Anne. No, I know. She puts me to shame. <laughs>